Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is the new ASUS ProArt StudioBook 16 OLED. Bit of a mouthful, but there is an awful lot going on with this because it is essentially another one of those creator laptops. High-end, powerful laptops with uh, color accurate screens and still reasonably portable form factors aimed at you know content creators and YouTubers and renderers and all those fancy workstation-y people including me, to be fair, and actually this is exactly the kind of laptop that I would want to use uh, as a desktop replacement or even when I'm editing on the go. But the problem is there are so many of these NVIDIA Studio certified creator laptops these days, uh, and you know what will convince you to drop two or three grand on this one and not the other one. For example, I recently reviewed the MSI Creator Z16, which was a great laptop, and it had a 120 hertz screen, which is not something you see very often on non-gaming laptops. So for me, that was a real stand out. But ASUS are doing something a little bit different with this. We've still got the high-end specs and the beautiful OLED screen, which we'll come back to in a second, but it's all about this guy, this ASUS dial. I must admit, before I actually got hands-on with this, I didn't know if I loved the idea of having this wheel between the trackpad and the keyboard. I thought it might get in the way and feel a bit uncomfortable under my wrist. But as you can see, as I type and then use the trackpad, it actually never gets in the way. It's always under your palms. So to answer what might be your first question, no, it's not in the way, which is great. But then your second question is probably why? What is this for? Well, in programs that support it, like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, After Effects, it's essentially another way of helping you interact with the program. And it actually works really well, whether you're sort of scrubbing through your timeline, zooming in and out, or you're just using it on Windows to adjust the volume or brightness. Lightroom Classic is pretty fun, where you can sort of adjust the exposure and shadows and contrast with this in a very sort of analog way, which I must say does feel quite intuitive. There's definitely gonna be some muscle memory relearning to be had here to sort of, uh, you know, remember to use it and fully take advantage of it. And also while you can customize the functionality in the different apps within this Creator Hub program, which I'll talk about in a second, you don't have sort of unlimited options for it. There are only really a handful per program. And again, the list of programs that this supports is very limited. There's no DaVinci Resolve or you know, 3ds Max or SolidWorks or actual Lightroom outside of Lightroom Classic. So hopefully we do see this continue to be supported by ASUS. Although it is really good to see that you actually get similar functionality with this to using the Microsoft dial. So actually in the Creator Hub, you can switch between a SUS dial and Microsoft to then get different uses out of it. It definitely makes the laptop stand out and alongside the three function keys that we get on the bottom here below the trackpad and also a couple of customizable buttons actually on the keyboard, you can really set this up to how you use it uh, to hopefully again speed up your workflow. So this little built-in dial is definitely a highlight of the laptop, but it is by no means the full story because for me, one of the absolute standouts of this is this screen. It's a 16 inch, 16 by 10, which is great to see, 4K plus resolution OLED screen. We're looking at 100% sRGB and 97% Adobe RGB and DCI P3, although ASUS claim 100% P3, but well, that's what I got from my tests. I must admit, I do love this trend towards 16 by 10 aspect ratios. We're seeing a lot more of it these days. And combine that with the 4K res and also that OLED panel, this is absolutely glorious to use. It really, really is. And if you're worried about OLED burn-in, well, firstly, ASUS give you a 7,000 hour warranty for this screen at 200 nits. But realistically, I've never had a problem with OLED screens. There's built-in pixel refreshers in terms of the actual Samsung panel that they're using. Uh, and also it comes pre-shipped with dark mode. And there's a few other things you can do like automatically hide the taskbar. Really, you don't have to worry. And you are getting that one million to one contrast ratio and also 500 nits of brightness, which is pretty decent. The downside though, is that it is a 60 Hertz panel. I think that would have been the one extra feature that would have really put this over the top for me, like the MSI Z16, would it be to have that 120 Hertz screen? Because even if you're not gaming, that smoother refresh just makes everything you do on the desktop or you know, in Premiere Pro on the timeline feels smoother. Although this does have a trick up its sleeve because the touchpad doubles as a digitizer. So you can use your uh, stylus of choice with this and the 1024, I think it is, levels of pressure and then do your fancy drawing and doodling on screens. So that is definitely a nice extra to have along with a ASUS dial as well to really make this stand out as a creator laptop. Amazingly, we're this far into the video and we haven't even talked about specs yet. So let's get those out of the way. And this new ProArt StudioBook comes with either an RTX 3060 or 3070, uh, which I've got in here, which is a 110 watt TGP variant. 
along with either a Ryzen 7 5800H or Ryzen 9, up to 64 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage, both of which are upgradable, which is great to see. And also interestingly, the two M2 slots for the storage are pre-configured in RAID 0. So I'm actually getting up to about 6,000 megabytes per second read and write. And finally, powering everything, we have a 90 watt hour battery, which is a pretty good size, and as soon as say, will get you about eight and a half hours of light use, although in my test, that's closer to sort of six and a half, seven hours. If you're gaming on this or intensive uh, workloads, that's gonna drop right down. So realistically, you're gonna wanna plug it in with this power brick. So this is essentially what you're carrying with you. Now, it is actually quite a portable laptop for a 16 inch screen with these CAS specs. It's not too bad at all. Uh, we're looking at 2.4 kilograms and just under 20 mil thick. So reasonably thin and light, although you'll definitely feel this in your backpack or your briefcase if you're lugging it around with you, but not too bad. And actually we do have a really good range of ports as well, including an RJ45 Ethernet, uh, the three and a half mil combo jack, two USB 3.2, Gen 2 Type A's and also two Type C's, a full size and very fast SD card reader, and also a full fat HDMI 2.1 port. Now you'll also notice this power button doubles as a fingerprint reader, plus we have this webcam up here uh, with an IR camera as well, so it supports Windows Hello face unlocking, and it also has this very nifty little uh, webcam privacy shutter, so if you don't fancy anyone uh, hacking into your laptop and then spying on you, then you can physically hide it, which is quite nice to see. In terms of design, there's no mistaking this is a more professional kind of workstation -y laptop. It's a subtle, smart, and quite professional design. It's an all aluminium alloy chassis, which also has an anti-fingerprint smudge coating built in apparently, which seems to be doing a fairly good job, although there's still a couple of greasy stains from my uh, grubby pores. Speakers are top notch, they're Harman Kardon tuned, and there's actually a really uh, good amount of bass to it, which is not something you usually find on laptops, so very impressive speakers. Now, as you can hear, it does get quite loud, although this is with the full fan toggle enabled and also in rendering mode. Normally, in normal mode, uh, it's actually pretty much silent, even when you're you know, just browsing Google Chrome, doing light stuff, you won't really hear the fan, but I do love the idea that in the Creator Hub here, you can just put it into rendering mode, turn on full fan, and then you're gonna get the best performance, which obviously is what you're gonna want if you're rendering a video or actually playing games on this. So this is the ProArt Creator Hub, and it's a pre-installed app you get with the uh, laptop, and you've got this dashboard which gives you all your sort of important information. You can go to the color calibration tab, and if you plug in a colorometer, you can actually calibrate the color that way. And then you've got the control settings for adjusting the ASUS dial and all the customizable buttons. And basically you can just tinker with the laptop and set it up how you like. But overall, I mean, top-notch specs, a really beautiful color accurate OLED screen, uh, this ASUS dial, which of course makes it a bit unique, great range of ports, really comfortable and responsive keyboard and touchpad. Yeah, what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy something like this? And also, what do you think of the dial? Great idea or just a bit of a gimmick? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you do want to see more from me, a cheeky little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Jam.